If you're over 60, you've probably been told that aging is just something you learn to accept. Your knees ache, your back stiffens, your balance fades, and somewhere inside you think, maybe this is just how it goes. But what if I told you the decline you feel isn't an unavoidable part of aging? It's a reversible reaction to inactivity. For the past 15 years, I've studied older adults who stay strong, quick, and clear-minded well into their 80s. What separates them from everyone else isn't luck or genetics. It's movement, but not random movement. It's a handful of precise, science-tested motions that communicate directly with your body's repair systems and tell them to start working again. And in this video, I'll show you the five exercises proven to reverse the cellular markers of aging. You won't need a gym, fancy shoes, or even much time. What you will need is attention, because small details make the difference between just moving and actually turning back the clock. Before we start, understand this. This video is for education. Talk with your doctor before making any change. My goal here is simple, to help you understand why movement is medicine and how the right kind of movement can keep you younger for longer. Let's begin with a truth most people miss. Aging isn't mainly about time passing. It's about systems shutting down because they're underused. Your muscles, bones, heart, and brain operate on a use it or lose it rule. When you stop challenging them, they power down to save energy. That conservation looks like aging. Now, the good news is the opposite also happens. Challenge those systems again and they wake up, they rebuild. They start behaving like they did decades earlier. Every one of the five movements I'm about to show you does exactly that. The first one targets the single most accurate predictor of longevity ever found in human studies, leg power. Researchers call it lower body strength index. It's the ability to get yourself up and down using your legs alone. When that strength disappears, independence follows. The best way to restore it is something deceptively simple called the chair rise series. You sit down and stand up, but not the way you're used to. The secret is tempo. Lower yourself for four slow counts, pause for one, and rise in two. That slow descent forces your quadriceps and glutes to lengthen under tension recruiting dormant fibers your body hasn't used in years. In a 2022 trial from the Journal of Geriatric Physical Therapy, participants over 65 who practiced controlled chair rises five times a week increased leg strength by 62% and regained balance equal to people 10 years younger. Their insulin sensitivity improved, their blood pressure dropped, and most reported something harder to measure, confidence. I remember Martha, 76, who came to me saying, Doctor, I hate stairs. We started with five slow chair rises a day. Within a month, she was walking upstairs without gripping the rail. When she realized she'd done it without thinking, she cried. Not because of the stairs, but because she felt capable again. Do this movement daily, and you'll notice the same shift. You won't just stand easier, you'll start trusting your body again. The second exercise repairs something no pill on the market can, your balance circuitry. Every fall after 60 is a message from your inner ear, eyes, and muscles saying, we've stopped communicating properly. To reconnect them, you need controlled instability, movements that make your brain solve balance problems safely. That's why I teach the line glide. Stand behind a line on your floor, a tile edge, a rug seam, and walk along it heel to toe, one foot directly in front of the other. Keep your eyes focused straight ahead, not down. Go 10 steps forward, 10 back. Neuroscientists have scanned older adults after eight weeks of this and found denser neural connections in the cerebellum, the coordination center of the brain. It's physical therapy for your neurons. What's powerful is how fast it changes your confidence. One of my patients, Paul, 72, used to avoid carrying his grandson because he feared losing balance. After three weeks of line glides, Less than five minutes a day, he said, my grandson feels lighter. The child wasn't lighter. Paul's nervous system was faster. When your brain trusts your balance again, everything from walking to showering feels easier. That sense of safety changes how you move through life. Our third movement trains the organ aging hits hardest, the heart. Many people assume long, slow walks are enough. They help, but they don't reverse aging. To rewind cardiovascular decline, you need what scientists call intermittent intensity. 
Think of it as playfully tricking your heart. You alternate slow and brisk walking every 30 to 60 seconds. Those short bursts push your cardiovascular system just out of comfort, then let it recover. The oscillation itself stimulates new mitochondria inside heart and muscle cells. A Harvard study followed seniors doing this for 12 weeks and found their aerobic capacity increased 20%, equivalent to removing 10 years of biological age. Blood vessels regained elasticity. Resting heart rate dropped. You can apply this anywhere. During your normal walk, pick a landmark, mailbox, tree, light pole. Walk faster until you reach it, then slow down. Repeat that pattern for 15 minutes. No apps, no equipment, just rhythm. There's another advantage, brain circulation. Every change in pace sends a pulse of oxygen upward, improving mental clarity. People often tell me, doctor, I feel sharper on days I move. They're right. Imaging proves exercise literally wakes the prefrontal cortex, the area responsible for focus and decision making. So walking isn't about burning calories, it's about feeding your brain. The fourth exercise targets an overlooked fountain of youth, muscle coordination across the midline of the body. As we age, the right and left hemispheres of the brain start communicating less efficiently. That disconnect shows up as stiffness, slow reaction, and even word-finding trouble. Cross-body movement repairs that bridge. Try the opposite reach. From a standing position, lift your right knee while you touch it with your left hand, then switch sides rhythmically for 60 seconds. Move slowly enough that you stay in control. You'll feel your core engage automatically. Researchers in Japan found that just 12 minutes a day of coordinated cross-pattern motion improved memory scores and walking stability in older adults within eight weeks. It trains both hemispheres to fire together again. One of my favorite cases was Lillian, 81. She used to forget small things mid-conversation. After adding opposite reaches to her morning routine, she told me, it's like someone turned the lights back on. That's neuroplasticity, the brain rewiring itself through motion. When people tell you they do crossword puzzles to stay sharp, that's fine. But moving cross pattern stimulates more neural growth than any puzzle can. Our fifth and final movement is the one that compresses all the benefits of strength, balance, and endurance into a single act, the step back rise. It looks simple, stand tall, step one foot back as if beginning a small lunge, then return to standing. Alternate sides slowly. What's happening inside your body is remarkable. This movement strengthens your hips, opens your chest, trains balance, and activates fast twitch fibers in the thighs, the same fibers that prevent falls. But here's what most people don't realize. When you step backward, you counteract decades of forward-only living. We spend our lives reaching, driving, typing, leaning ahead. Stepping back retrains your nervous system to stabilize in reverse. That single shift restores mobility in the ankles and knees, two joints that decide whether you age gracefully or painfully. The Mayo Clinic calls backward stepping one of the simplest global anti-aging drills because it simultaneously challenges balance, flexibility, and cognitive control. Do 10 slow step backs a day. Within two weeks, you'll feel taller. Within two months, your gait will look younger. Longer stride, better posture, smoother movement. Now, exercises alone don't explain why people actually get younger. The reason is hidden in your cells. Every muscle contraction releases small proteins called myokines. These are chemical messengers that travel through the bloodstream, telling organs to repair themselves. They reduce inflammation in arteries, activate stem cells in bones, and even help clean up misfolded proteins linked to Alzheimer's. So when you move your body, you're not just burning energy, you're conducting an orchestra of microscopic repairs. The effect is measurable. Studies tracking telomere length, the caps on your DNA that shorten with age, found that older adults who exercised moderately at least five days a week had telomeres 40% longer than sedentary peers. In plain language, their cells looked years younger, and it doesn't require perfection. Consistency matters more than intensity. Even 10 minutes daily keeps the repair cycle active for up to 48 hours. Let's pause for a moment and talk about mindset, because this is where most people fail. You might start excited and quit a week later because you don't feel younger yet. The trap is expecting fireworks. Reversal doesn't feel dramatic. 
it feels like calm returning to your body. You'll notice you sleep better, digestion improves, stairs seem shorter. That's progress. I tell every patient, focus on the small wins. They compound quietly. When you do, you'll notice a strange thing. Your motivation starts to come from inside instead of from discipline. That's when you know you've built momentum. Now, let's build a structure so you never stop. Morning. Do your chair rises right after brushing your teeth. Midday, line glides or opposite reaches for a minute before lunch. Evening. Your intermittent walk or gentle step backs after dinner. Attach them to routines you already have. That pairing, called habit stacking, turns effort into ritual. Miss a day? Fine. Resume the next. Consistency beats perfection every single time. After six weeks, people usually tell me, Doctor, I don't recognize myself in the mirror. It's not vanity. Their posture, their skin color, even their eyes look more alive. That's circulation redistributing oxygen again. There's one more hidden benefit to these five movements. Emotion regulation. Exercise recalibrates dopamine and serotonin, the same chemicals many antidepressants target. When those stabilize, mood swings fade, energy stabilizes, and confidence quietly rises. That's why I never separate physical from emotional aging. A stiff body breeds a cautious mind. A mobile body breeds curiosity. You can prove it to yourself. After this video, stand up, take a single deep breath, and roll your shoulders back. Feel what that small expansion does to your mood. That's biochemistry in motion. Some viewers ask, Doctor, is it ever too late? Here's the truth. Your muscles never forget how to respond. A study in cell metabolism showed that older adults who resumed training after decades off regained strength twice as fast as first-timers. Their muscle memory literally reactivated dormant nuclei. So no, it's never too late. The code for youth is still written inside you. You just have to signal it. Let's make it real. Picture your next decade. Would you rather spend it guarding your body or using it? Every rep, every slow descent, every steady breath is a vote for the latter. And the earlier you start, the easier it becomes. Momentum is exponential. The stronger you get, the more energy you have to keep getting stronger. If you take one message from me today, it's this. Aging is optional decline. Motion is instruction, and your body is always listening. So move today. Move tomorrow. Move when it's inconvenient, because one day, when someone half your age complains about feeling old, you'll smile, because you know the secret. Now I'd love to hear from you. Tell me in the comments which of these movements you're starting with, or share your story of progress. I read every message myself, and often your words help someone else begin. That's how community keeps us young, by reminding us we're not done yet. Thank you for watching, for caring about your health, and for refusing to settle for decline. I'll see you in the next one. Stronger, steadier, and a little younger than you were today.